sounds like music theory. This is gonna be fun. Hi, my name is Paul Davis and today we're continuing the series about the basics of music theory. And today we're expanding to sus2, sus4 and bar chords. So in previous videos we already found out that the major chord is built on the 1, the 3 and the 5 from the major scale. And the minor chord is just the same but the third note is lowered by one semitone making it a minor third and a minor chord. And now we're adding two chords to that list, the sus2 and the sus4, also called suspended chords. 2 and 4 stand respectively for the 2 and the 4 from the major scale or the major second and the perfect fourth. But those sus chords are still made up of only three unique notes, so adding a two would make four. So we need to ditch one from the one, three, five, and the one we're gonna ditch is the three. So we omit the three and we add a two or a four. So the functions become for a sus two, a one, two, five, and for a sus four, you guessed it, one, four, five. So these chords are neither major nor minor because of the lack of the third. So now back to the guitar. Let's make these suspended chords on a guitar. So let's for example start with the A chord. Let's quickly find the third because that note needs to change. So the third you can find it multiple ways. The third note from the major scale for example, so A, B, C sharp. And the C sharp, well, it's fret 2 on the second string. Or you can check if you change your chord from major to minor, the note that changes, that is the third. Or you can just check the shape on the guitar, one, three, five, oh, the three, C sharp. So many ways to check it, but the A chord. Now, if you want to make a sus4 chord from an A chord, we only need to change the third, one semitone up. So the third, one semitone higher becomes fret three. And if you change the 3 to 4, it becomes... So if, you... so if you change the 3 to a 4, it becomes an A sus4. Okay. Now to a sus2. If we want to change the major chord to a sus2 chord, we need to lower the 3rd by a whole tone instead of a semitone. So, a whole tone equals 2 frets, so the 3rd needs to be lowered by 2 frets. So fret 2 on the B string needs to be fret zero or an open string. So that's an A sus2 chord. Really open sounding chords. So if you want to play these chords in a row, sus4, one semitone lower, major, one semitone lower, minor, one semitone lower, sus2. So all those chords are just separated by raising or lowering the third by one semitone. Sus4, major, minor, sus2. That's the order. Or the other way around, sus2, minor, major, sus4. And the same applies to any chord shape you can think of. So for instance, let's try it on the D chord. Let's find the third. The F sharp is the third of the D. D, E, F sharp, third note from the major scale. And the F sharp in a D shape is the first string fret 2. So if you want to make a major into sus4, raise the third by one semitone. So fret 2 becomes fret 3. If you want to make the sus2 chord, we just need to lower the third a whole tone. So from fret 2 to fret 0 again, so an open E string. And in between those lies the minor chord. So from low to high in this case, D sus2 with an open E string, raising by one semitone, making it a minor chord, raising it one semitone again, major, one semitone up, sus4. Wonderful. But some problems may occur, for instance, when we try to make the E chord. So the sus4, this is the third, fret 3 on the G string. Let's raise it. Sus4. Perfect, sounds good. Let's lower it to a minor chord. Okay. 
Now let's lower it to a sus2. Now wait, we can't lower an open string. So we need to find that note on a different spot. So the F sharp, it becomes an F sharp because the two of E, E, F sharp, the second note of the scale. So that F sharp, you can find that over here, fret four on the D string. We learned that in episode one, didn't we? So you can play an E chord, but now add the sus four, uh, sus two, excuse me. So E and the fifth, the B, and now an F sharp. So these three notes make an E sus2 chord. But if you want to add more strings to make it sound full, we can't have a G string open because that will make it a minor chord with a nine or a two. It sounds beautiful, but it may not be the one you need. And we can't have it on fret one because that will make it a major chord, a major add nine, for example. So what do we do? If you want to make the G string a fifth, you can just play it. So the fifth is the B, and that is fret four on the G string. So now we made ourselves a chord, an E sus2 chord, using just a bit of creativity. Awesome, so now let's take this to bar chords. Let's go to the A chord again. We can move this shape up all the way across the neck. And then we keep the A shape, but it becomes a different chord. So what we need to do is the following. We need to hold the chord, but without our index finger, because we need that to bar the chord. So just maybe you would play an A like this, but just ditch your index finger, move your fingers up and use your pinky instead. Now we can move the shape up the neck and our index finger is accommodating for the open strings that need to be moved up as well. So let's play an A chord. So an A chord, three semitones up, A, B flat, B, C. So three semitones up and A will be a C. So let's do that. One semitone, two semitones, three semitones. And now use your index finger to bar on the third fret, the A string and the E string. So you can think of it like that, or you can just remember the shape and see what note your index finger is playing. So my index finger is playing a C. So now I know this chord has to be a C chord. And it is, wow. So a D chord, once whole tone up. E chord, F, F sharp, G. You can play it anywhere on the neck you like. So if you have physical trouble playing bar chords, I made a video a while ago about bar chords, about playing them correctly. Check out that video if you're still interested. It's very old, but I still stand behind it. So check it out. Okay, so now we have this C chord. And if you wanna make a C sus4 out of this chord, well, the same applies to this one. Just raise the third by one semitone. So the third is still on the same spot. That doesn't change. So fret five on the B string becomes fret six. A C sus four. Wonderful. We can play a C minor chord like this. So we lowered the major third by one semitone from fret five to fret four, creating a minor chord. And now we can lower the third again one note, the minor third, to a sus two. And now we're playing fret three. So again, this shape yields four different chords. C major, C sus four, C minor, and C sus two. And you can play that everywhere on the neck. F, F major, F sus four, F minor, and F sus two. And you can move this shape anywhere across the fretboard on the A string, unlocking four different chords per shape. That's amazing. All right, you can do the same with the E chord. So let's play it without our index finger. Because we need that one for the barring. So let's move this up to, let's say, A. So the A is over here. 
because E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, and A. If you want to quickly navigate through the fingerboard, I usually uh, don't mention the sharps or the flats, so E, F, G, A. So you can just navigate more quickly so you don't have to name each sharp or flat. So we've got a major chord over here and the third is our middle finger on the G string. If you want to make this chord into a sus4, simply raise the third by one semitone, creating this shape. Beautiful. Back to major. Now lower the major by one semitone so it becomes a minor. And now we can lower that one again, one semitone. Now we've got a sus2, but this one is a little bit different. You can play it with a bar shape. So I play it like this, my thumb is fretting the A, and then my index is fretting the 2. But that's a bit difficult maybe. There you have it, the bar chords playing major, minor, sus2 and sus4. And there are more bar shapes if you look at the caged system. You've got five shapes you can use to make bar chords everywhere on the neck and alter it to sus4 and sus2. But that's another video. For now, I hope you learned something from this and I hope you can put it into practice for your own playing. So in the next video, we'll talk about intervals, which we discussed briefly, but we didn't label it as such, but they are very interesting. So make sure to stick around for that. And if you haven't subscribed, make sure to do that so you can follow this series. And if you like this video, you know what to do. Thanks for watching. Have a nice day. Bye.